it's so exciting to like pop on the stream and see two viewers right away. <laughs> Usually the first few minutes of stream are me like talking to myself, which is great, but it's a lot easier to talk to myself when there's other people on the line. It's my birthday today. I don't feel any different. I feel happy. I feel good. We've been starting out streams the last few weeks with some show and tell. You can see it is really small. I picked up this book at a bookstore like on a whim and it ended up being really cool and really helpful. This book is Problem Solving 101. And this book is super cool to me because they take what could be a complex financial problem or a strategy problem or something's going on, shrink it down to something that is like so much more manageable and less stressful. And the way they do that is uh, can mix up stories with like fruit and vegetables and they are trying to do things. One, I think they're trying to start a band and another one, I think they're trying to sell their album. And he takes those problems and he squishes them down. Sometimes the hardest part is just like not even knowing where to start, especially when it comes to financial things, right? You have to know like which problem to solve first almost in finances a lot of the time. So, uh, and there's super cute little, little cute illustrations in here. I'm super excited to show you. So, um, opening page, Problem Solving 101, a simple book for smart people. How cool is that? <laughs> it's the fucking cutest thing ever. And in the background we have, uh, what would normally be called like, like mono line. Just one line thickness. Then you got the super thick title. And Lynn says it's cute. Viverette agrees. <laughs> um, I'm going to go through here. So they have, uh, they do it with classes is how the book's organized. So they start out with problem solving kid basics. Class two is rock bands and root causes. Class three is fishy goals and solid achievements. And class four is soccer school pros and cons. And um, they they go through, they make like little tables and things. Here's another illustration. Preface with uh, why problem solving. Uh, we all have to make decisions. Whether you're a student, a parent, a business person, or the president of the United States, you face problems every day that need solving. The problems may vary, maybe because you need to pass a math class or decide where to live or figure out how to improve your company's bottom line. Maybe you wanna lose weight or simply get better at golf. Whether the issue is big or small, we all set goals for ourselves, face challenges, and strive to overcome them. There's a fundamental approach to solving these real life problems one that can, can consistently lead you to effective and satisfying solutions, and chances are no one has even bothered to show you how. Hard agree. One of my missions in writing this book was to show everyone a simple way to deal with the problems they face in their everyday lives. But I wasn't just trying to communicate a skill set. Being a problem solver isn't just an ability, it's a mindset. One that drives people to bring out the best in themselves and to shape the world in a positive way. Rather than accepting the status quo, true problem solvers are constantly trying to proactively shape their environment. Uh, imagine our, how different our world would be if leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Eleanor Roosevelt, JFK, and Steve Jobs lacked this attitude. I hope this book will inspire both children and adults to develop this proactive mindset by first tackling the problems in their own lives. Once you learn the simple way to solve personal challenge, the personal challenges you face every day, you might just see that your bigger dreams and accomplishments are also within your reach. So like super strong start. I agree with so much of that. Um, very much like approaching the world from, a, you know, you, you change the world by changing yourself kind of a mentality and uh, focusing on things in your little corner of the world. And uh, if everybody does that, it can make huge, huge, huge changes.
Class number one, problem solving, kid basics. <laughs> he kind of has like a little uh, chart. Miss Psy, Mr. Critic, Miss Dreamer, Mr. Go-Getter. <laughs> and then the problem solving kids, they all have different paths to their goals. Miss Psy is the kind of person who gives up immediately whenever they face even the smallest challenge. She says, I'll never be able to do that, which isn't to say that she couldn't achieve. Uh, they'll say things like, I'll never be able to do that. I'm not that talented. I'm not going to try. What if I fail? Everyone will make fun of me. Um, nobody understands me. Nobody cares about me. Uh, Mr. Critic is the opposite. He is unafraid to speak up. Here is... <laughs> Here's Mr. Critic. He's pissed at everybody and every and everything. <laughs> Someone didn't have their morning coffee. Uh, Mr. Critic says things like, "Well, that definitely didn't work. What a stupid idea. I told you that would get screwed up. It's all your fault. Come on, I told you what you needed to do. Why couldn't you get it done, Miss Dreamer?" is right here some things miss dreamer says is uh i want to write a novel i want to be a doctor i'm an idea person don't bother me with the nitty gritty details let's see and then mr mr go-getter and mr go-getter is in a he's in a goddamn rocket ship mr go-getter may not seem like a non-problem solver when you first meet him. He's definitely not one to worry about problems or entertain negative thoughts. And when something goes wrong, he quickly jumps into action. His attitude is, I can't change the past, but I can do something now. Mr. Go-Getter's tenacity and proactiveness are positive traits. However, if he knew how to pause and think for a minute before rushing to execute, he would be able to achieve so much more. He also tends to blame every failure on a simple lack of effort. <laughs> hustle culture, hustle culture. Hustle and grind, bro. You just need to try harder. <laughs> Sound familiar? I, I have a very distinct image in my mind of this person. I think at my worst, I'm definitely this person. Come on, we don't have time to plan. We just gotta go. <laughs> Um, Mr. Go-Getter says things like, I've got to try harder. I can't stop now. I know this will work if I just put in a little more effort. Why stop to think? It's just a waste of time. Everything is about execution. Uh, are you one of these types? Do you ever find yourself sighing and giving up? Do you think it's easier to criticize other people rather than to trying to do anything on your own? Do you love to dream but hate to plan? Do you attack problems head on, but fail to turn on the brakes when you aren't getting anything done? Or are you more like the problem solving kid? The threat, I'm absolutely the dreamer. I'm living in a world of illusions. I think of a lot of things to do, but at the end of the day makes nothing. Yeah, it is totally a thing. And, and I think also, super common amongst creatives right because it's like we have uh we're really right-brained people we're, we're thinking about like what we want to do and it gets really exciting uh i've also heard a term for this it's the uh called the long middle the long middle of a project um when you're starting a project the start of a project you have energy and excitement because uh it's a new idea so so there's there's so many possibilities it's super exciting and it's really easy to get started and the end of a project is really exciting because you're seeing um the results of all of your hard work but the middle the middle i think is really what uh separates people the long middle and in the middle it's just doing the thing <laughs> and that and that i'm always learning how to cope with the with the middle how do i stay on track for, for days or hours or weeks or months or whatever it, it takes to um, do that project. 
Problem solving kids have a real flair for setting goals and getting things accomplished. They take overcoming challenges in stride. Like Mr. Go-Getter, they don't agonize over problems. However, unlike Mr. Go-Getter, they think about the root causes of their problems and map out an effective plan before and while taking action. And they are willing to rework their plan as new challenges pop up, striking a balance between thinking and acting that can accomplish amazing things. Problem solving kids enjoy learning from their successes as well as from their failures. And I th and for me, that really hits home for me, being kind of the, the rocket Mr. Go-Getter dude, was starting to view failures as, as not like hard stop failures, but starting to view failures as these, uh, like these really exciting learning moments the Barrett, taking action for me is the biggest challenge in my projects. Yeah, making making the connection between uh, an idea and and actually doing it. What do you find helps you cross that bridge? Like from from idea to to drawing it. A catastrophic failure is terrible. <laughs> you know, like if you uh, make a mistake so large it drastically changes and ruins your life it's like well you don't want to do that but a piece of art or a project at your work is hardly catastrophic if it fails it's just a it's a chance to you know say okay this didn't work i need to approach this differently and go a different way understanding the situation is in one then two identifying the root cause of the problem then three developing an effective plan and then four is actually enacting that until it loops back around to understanding the situation again doing things without taking it seriously helps realistically i never start any project without anxiously crying about it for the first day or two haha <laughs> think boo from monsters inc but with a tablet pen <laughs> anxiety can absolutely be like a control thing you know we're trying to control the outcome and we are anticipating it not working and then and then once and then once i get going i realize it wasn't a big deal at all so you you find your you find yourself like once you get hip deep in it and then you realize that the the planning and the thinking you're doing in your head wasn't such a scary thing I always forget how hard starting is until I have to start a new project. <laughs> yes, absolutely. The pizza analogy for breaking a big thing down into smaller things. So if your goal is to like, I don't know, I'm, I'll make some buying, buying a car is your pizza. That's your end goal. And then what you do is you break it down into slices and each slice of pizza um, slices for buying a car would be researching what cars break down the least often and two would be finding cheap car insurance and three would be uh, seeing what dealers in town have the best deals and then four would be figuring out uh, pre-owned or new or you know so you have all your so your your car each slice is those smaller things and then in each of those slices you have your ingredients put aside this much each paycheck google local dealerships call local dealerships visit local dealerships and then at, and then you might visit one and then you'd write test drive so you so now it's like you've taken this thing of like how do I get a car? How do I plan this? How do I do this thing? And you're like breaking it down into things that you can do just that day. And literally this stream would not happen if I didn't do that. Uh, so yeah, anyways, I, I honestly didn't expect to uh, talk for 30 minutes about this. Yeah, thanks for hanging in there. And uh, yeah, they have like action plans for how the characters in these stories figure out things. Um, and I find this book super helpful. Um, it's such a small book and it's such an old book that I imagine it's got to be uh, really cheap online. Um, yep. And again, problem solving 101.